That was pretty good. Can we do that? I think so. Is that copyrighted? I have no idea. Hmm. Probably not if you do it that way. I think you can only sample certain clips. Do, 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 I got to make it sound different. Then it's like not copyrighted. Oh, kind of like, uh, like scattered or something. It's like cool. vanilla ice right. and, and <laughs> under pressure. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that clip. Hey, kids, you're listening to another episode of Love to Hate with Brandon doing our uh, beatbox intro there. If you didn't recognize it. Well, first of all, I'm Philip Fullman. He is Brandon Luna. That's me. Uh, who was doing the intro to uh, the X-Files. I was pretty good. I recognized it. So yeah, it's kind of recognizable. Yeah, I mean, if you if you ever watched an episode of that show, you know, the truth according to the show is, is out, out there. Yeah, I loved uh, Mark Snow's view on it's like what what's the lyrics for the for the song? He's like, oh, I have lyrics. The X Files is a show with music by Mark Snow. <laughs> that was like his <laughs> his lyrics for the song that he had in his head. I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. I think I still got some episodes of that from the last season they did that I haven't watched. Yeah, I didn't get there either. I'll have to check that out. But what we're talking about is Area 51. Really? Yeah, that's uh, apparently a bunch of yahoos were going to go out there. And yep. It was what? It was an internet joke, right? Or so, yeah, it was an internet joke, yeah. They were saying that people were going to go and what was the, th- what was the cat uh, or the motto? They can't stop us all. Storm Area 51. They can't stop us all. Apparently, the people who say they can't stop us all have never paid attention to like history because the U.S. military is pretty good at stopping. Yeah, if they want to stop you, they got the power to do so. Yeah, it's that's uh, pretty sure that wouldn't be a, a hard bullets, problem. Yeah, bean bags, whatever they'll stop taking you. out a dude with a hacky sack and a man bun. I'm pretty <laughs> right. sure, right? Not really that concerned. Although I'm sure probably half the people out there were so stoned they thought they just got hit with a hacky sack when it was one of those yeah, beanbag things. That's true too. That's true. Right, just hacky sack. So oh, what? Dude. What happened? What they find? I mean, was <laughs> was the truth out there? The what truth, was the, the truth? truth? Was out there. The truth was that it was basically a music festival, basically. So, <laughs> so the idea was that all these people were going to ascend on Area 51 on a certain day at a certain time, and that they wouldn't be able to be stopped if they all came in droves, and they were expecting about. Anywhere between five thousand and twenty five thousand people to attend, yeah. And what they got was about in the three thousand range. Um, so it basically turned into kind of a free for all. People having fun, camping out. A couple people stepped over the line and got in trouble. There was a couple arrests. There was one guy from Canada that was arrested for peeing on the fence, apparently, because you know that's something you do from Canada. I don't know. He thought Weird. it was a good idea. He was full of you know Molson Golden or whatever the <laughs> hell they drink over there. Oh yeah, Pabst Blue Ribbon. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever that is. What's Canadian yep. beer? I have no idea. I don't know. Something that the McKenzie brothers drink. Yeah, Doug and Bob. <laughs> what was that beer called? From no Strange idea. Brew. I don't remember. Damn it. How can we not remember that? We're so old. Do you remember that movie, Strange I Brew? I do. Yeah. Doug and Bob McKenzie. Yeah, great stuff. But um, yeah, so that was really what it boiled down to. And the idea behind the movement, obviously, is that they're going to storm it and they're going to find out what's actually in Area 51. And it just wound up becoming another Woodstock type event, um, which I think is great for that area. Um, if they can turn that into a yearly thing where a bunch of hippies go out there and tent out and just have a good time, then that's money in the bank. Yeah. Uh, there were several uh, companies that actually, you know, thought that was a pretty good idea to get involved with that. So Funyuns was out there marketing. Oh, and, that's uh, perfect. Yeah. So there's a lot of companies know, out there. Know that, your audience, man. Exactly, because these guys are out there being high. Funyuns, Durex Condoms, Kool-Aid, and the Jonas Brothers were all out the there. The Jonas Brothers were out there? <laughs> Probably smoking cigars. Probably. Yeah. Arby's, Bud Light, they all were part of that. Pretty thing. much anything a stoner would... Uh... Right. I'm surprised Taco Bell wasn't out there. Like, it's a man, real that big would surprise be, yeah. that Taco Bell was not out there. Yeah. Because they would People make out there money on those 12 and, uh, packs of... Tacos. Killing themselves with the vapes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We should do an episode on that. Killing we yourself with vapes. Do an episode on that. Yeah. yeah. That would be uh, that would be a good one to do. Because I did that video for the for the shop on... Oh, did you? Nick Jonas, yeah. Oh, okay, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, talking about... Because uh, that was a big deal that he was on the cover of a cigar magazine. Mm-hmm. Why the hell? So, anyway. Yeah. The guy smokes cigars. That's why. Yeah. So, there you yeah. go. So... The truth may be out there. Where do you... Where do you uh, Stand that. I'll just say right now, uh, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not saying I don't believe there's like flying objects that that people can't identify. I'm not buying the little green men thing. No, you're not an aliens guy. No, I, there's got to be life out there. Man. I, I'm not saying there's something. not. I'm not saying yeah. there's not. Um, I'm saying I don't think they came down and built civilizations prior to us being here. 
I don't think they found little green men or gray creatures with eyes. And for why do I mean just because they're aliens, why do they have to look different? Why are they, you know, some form of monster or weird right. looking thing? Um, why couldn't they just look like regular people? It goes back to the whole thing about accents, right? Like when we think as Americans, we don't have accents. Right. We have American accents. Like right. If we go anywhere else, they're going to go, oh, you have an American accent. Like, I don't have an accent. What are you, crazy? Yeah. British weirdo. You know, but that's, right. that's just the way it is. So it's the same thing. Aliens come here and see us. They're going to think we're the weirdos, you know? So. Mm. I don't know. I don't I don't go for the little green men thing or the little gray, gray scaly men thing. You think they're just politicians? Like they're just lizard people from, yeah, they, from <laughs> V. That'd be really cool if they were lizard people from V. What was it? What was the thing in Men in Black? The Weekly World News was really the the true news, and, <laughs> right? But nobody, Bat boy and... yeah, but nobody ever believed it because it was just too crazy. Right. No, I don't know. I'm saying that the universe is so huge, and they're still discovering parts of it. That, yeah, there could be a planet out there with life on it. I just don't know that they're little in green, or you know, Klingon or right. Romulan or whatever. Mm. That's that's my whole take on it. Well, and to give credence to that, the U.S. Navy just said here recently, the last within the last week, there were some videos that were shown on uh, the History Channel, one of their weird shows, mm-hmm. uh, whatever the show was originally called, where they show the same video like over and over. over that's span the of one. Yeah, they're going to tell you the minutes. truth, but. Um, I guess the okay the history show is called Unidentified and it was also there was also a uh, a New York Times article um that uh the US Navy confirmed that three of their F18 fighters the the gun cameras on there um did show unidentified aerial phenomenon that's what they're calling it not UFO but unidentified aerial phenomenon which makes sense unidentified you know but uh by calling it that, then you don't give as much credence to uh, little green men. And they're not saying that they're that's support of alien life or that there's life on other planets. They're just saying, hey, there's something our cameras caught. It was in the sky. We don't know what it was. But then, um, when was it? In 2017, I think it was in the same article in the, in the New York Times, the Pentagon, um, or it was revealed the Pentagon had a secret UFO uh, investigation project that they called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. So the Pentagon did study um, UFOs or unidentified flying objects to see, of course. If, you know, are these uh, are these things that are out there that are going to be a threat to us? Is this something that we need to be? Aware of, concerned about, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so yeah, the government's admitting, hey, there's stuff flying around up in the sky, and we don't know what it is. But we're not saying that it's aliens. Right. So. And to confirm that would cause a lot of issues, I think. So what do you think Area 51 is, then? What do you, do you think... I mean, I think it's pretty much government a government testing site for for new technology and stuff. I think it's you know that's why it's so safely guarded because it's uh, going to be a place where you can they don't want other countries going in there and checking stuff out and you know seeing what's what. So that's their way of um, having a secret place to test things. And maybe that's what it is. You know, that's that's probably all it is. But you never know. Well, I think that's where the stealth bomber was developed, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah, I mean, many of the conspiracy theorists basically base it on the fact that it is secret and that we don't know what it is, and there's always something about that unknown that people gravitate towards and build conspiracies around. So I think that's a a big part of it. I don't necessarily know that it's where aliens live or where alien technology is. And, you know, you could say there's people out there that say, like, oh, cell phone technology is alien technology, and all these things that we have now from that were you know, thought about back in the 60s on Star Trek are true, and it's all alien technology. Like, no, it could be just us being smart. And figuring shit out, you know. There was a documentary they did, the science of Star of uh, Star Trek, mm-hmm. and they talked to a lot of people who got into computers and technology. And the reason they did was Star Trek, right? And they talked about the fact that they invented the clam phone or the flip phone, 
was because of the the tricorder, yeah. or not the tricorder, but the communicator. The communicator, absolutely. Yeah. They were like, "Oh yeah, it mimicked it," so we just thought it was cool, right? So yeah, it's it's fiction lending itself to reality, mm-hmm. and yep. you got to figure at some point the iPads kind of like that, where guys are like, hey, "This is kind of cool." Yeah, you always okay. see that in TV shows back in the next generation where they're holding pads and just doing do, 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 do all this cool stuff. And you know it's still fictional because nobody's iPad works that fast. Right, and you can't do the thing where you take the image and throw it onto the you know hologram thing. Oh, yeah. Which they always have in freaking CSI and Hawaii Five O. I'm like, come on, guys. Oh, like, no, that doesn't yeah. exist yet. Like, there's no, no. No, Stop. none of that None of that stuff all that on those bullshit. shows that, yeah. that actually exist. All bullshit. No, I, d- I don't believe that. You don't, get, you don't get fingerprints back from Apis in 20 seconds. It doesn't happen. No, you know, that was the most unbelievable thing about 24. Not that Jack Bauer could survive, but that any of that shit worked as fast as it did. <laughs> right. Hey, we, a, we need we're to... talking about the government guys. This would have taken yeah. weeks, <laughs> months. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it, eventually we'll find the map. Uh, right. Be able to track his car. But, you know, in real time, there's going to be a lag here. We had, yeah, none of that right. stuff works that fast. It would have been like 24, 24 episodes and like five hours of actual action, and the rest of it's just <laughs> paperwork. <laughs> Them just waiting, paperwork and taking shits and eating. <laughs> That's what it would probably be it. You know, uh, my favorite season is still the one where Jack Bauer kicked a heroin addiction in a day. <laughs> right, he starts a day addicted to heroin, ends the day not addicted to heroin. Right, halfway through the season, he's like, "Oh, I'm normal back, but forget about that ever happened." The first five episodes, I'm <laughs> yeah. good now, guys. It's okay. No. Nope. No. Yep. I just had to put a little tussin on it, and I'm good. <laughs> That's know? right. I drank plenty of fluids, flushed it out. I'm good to go. No yep. more heroin for me. <laughs> Such bullshit. <laughs> Such bullshit. I so, still love this show, though, man. Oh, I do, too. I fucking too. love that show. I do, too. Yep. It's, uh, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Oh, it's not even guilty for me. Yeah. I, I take no guilt in it. Okay, maybe the last two seasons. Okay, my guilty pleasure is Strike Back. That show's a guilty pleasure. I still got to freaking watch that. Yeah, it's such a good, bad show. It's, I got to... Is it a bad show? It's a bad. Well, it's it's cheesy machismo garbage. I mean, you know, there's mm. like sex all through it, and it's just a lot of bullets and boobs, basically. So, but it's you know, I think there's parts of it that are smartly written. Uh, it gets a little off course, uh, probably third or fourth season, but it's still a very fun show. It's a very fun show to watch. It's every episode's like an action movie, you know, complete with great set pieces and action set pieces and explosions. And I, I will have to stuff. check that out. It's fun. I dig it. Um, there was a documentary called Unacknowledged. Did you ever see that? That was on Amazon as well. So, uh, or no, that's Netflix. So a guy, Dr. Stephen M. Greer, Mm -hmm. um, apparently he used to work with the government and they bring in other government people and he apparently shows all this paperwork and all these documents where the government acknowledged UFOs exist, that they were studying them, Mm -hmm. that he briefed President Obama on them. I think at one point they said... There's something in there where he says, you know, why can't we tell the president or reveal to him what we know? And they said, because it would put the president's life in jeopardy. Mm. He'd be a loose end. Like, what? Wow. Come on. Um, but they, apparently Can they tell all that stuff to Trump? Yeah, they're taking, <laughs> they're taking all of this uh, apparently real government documentation to prove that the government uh, has studied aliens they exist, UFOs exist, um, but it's just a big cover-up. Yeah. I don't buy it. You don't buy it. You think it's all bullshit. Which yeah. Was, which, which segues into, have you, have you seen the Penn and Teller bullshit episode where they go to the UFO thing? No. It's great. You can get bullshit on, on Amazon. They have all the episodes. Great show. Um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, I love Penn and Teller. Even their new show, Fool Us, is great. Yeah, it's fun. Um, but, um, yeah, it just the people out there and they, it's all some version of the same story. The, all the aliens look different, uh, yet somehow oddly similar. Um, one lady said she had an alien's kid mm-hmm. up on the ship or, I mean, and you look at these people I'm like, come on. <laughs> I mean, none of them are credible. Right. It's just so freaking bizarre. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, no. It's, it goes, okay, so there's a movie, uh, Mon- you ever seen Monsters, Inc.? Disney movie, Monsters, Inc.? Yeah. There's a scene there that I thought just, like, encapsulated, like, the people that get interviewed for television. Is that, you know, the little kid uh, was running around scaring people, 
and then they had the interviews of the monsters in the streets and the guys like and that that monster picked me up with his laser eyes and shook me like a dog and it's like you know just that's exactly the guy they get to interview when shit happens you know when there's lights in the sky they pick the one toothless wonder that has like his own opinion about what happened Jeff, that was a, an old jeff foxworthy joke he's like they always find that guy you know like that storm tore through here to tore up the trailer park like oh man why you gotta find that guy <laughs> right you know but that the, you know the that's... guy with no shirt and like five tattoos that aren't finished and right so i mean as, as i'm watching that documentary the the unacknowledged definitely more credible than the people um that uh, that show up to the UFO conventions, right? And the and the and the Area Fifty One thing. I mean, let's be honest. It started as a joke. Uh, it ended as a joke. Right. There was maybe thirty or forty people that showed up at three a.m. when they said they were going to storm it, and all they did was take social media videos and pictures, and they did the whole Naruto run thing. That was a big deal. Like, oh, we're going to Naruto run into the Area Fifty One. They just did videos back and forth of them doing that stuff, and and that's really what it amounted to. So, I think as a whole, Area Fifty One is kind of a joke, or at least it's become one. But I think it is actually a viable, you know, thing that the government's doing. They're they're doing some sure. stuff in there we don't know about. And you know what? I'm okay with that because there's some stuff we don't need to know about. There's yeah. some stuff for our safety that is probably better left unsaid. Well, think about it. I mean, how many threats are there to the country on a daily basis? And if we knew about them, we just couldn't leave the house. We would be paralyzed with fear. Five point five a day. Yeah, yeah. Without, I'm, I'm sure. I just made so that number a, up, but it's yeah. Accurate. But I mean, sir. If you knew of a serious threat and we, you know, yeah, you wouldn't leave the house. And the point five is only because one of them is from a midget. So, <laughs> <laughs> did we call them that now? It's a little people, I think. Uh, uh, that's, that's vertically challenged is that sensitive of me? I have no idea what you actually call. Them. Point of personal privilege. <laughs> God damn you! <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of, of documentaries with, uh, about idiots. Um, yeah, I said it. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> uh, behind the curve. Have you seen that about flat earthers? No. That's no. who I was saying fuck you to. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a documentary about flat earthers. Dude, <laughs> it's great. It is so hilarious. And there's, they, oddly enough, one of them, they do a podcast. Go yeah. figure. I think um, I did see this. And one is this woman... And then there's like a budding relationship that doesn't work out. But right. she's she's a conspiracy theorist on everything. And it kind of opens with the, the this guy's mom, who I think he still lives with. Mm. Yeah, there's a man in his 40s, uh, maybe right. pushing 50. And he's kind of like a, a, a flat earth celebrity. Like everybody wants to meet him, interview him, etc. Um and his mom makes some comment about, I was wondering when he would get around to this one or something. But apparently, like, he's gone through all the conspiracy theories and just, like, hopped from each one. Wow. And now he's landed on flat Earth. Right. And it's like, wow, you're really just gullible, aren't you? And there was that one where there was one guy that was more charismatic and he took it and kind of went with it. Yeah. And, like, and he would, yeah. He was like, oh, he stole all my ideas and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I am the actually, father of the flat earth right. theory. And this, and the girl that was actually in him was actually pretty attractive for him, I think. But because they had that, they were both interested in the same thing. They got together or whatever, something like that. I don't know. It was pretty ridiculous. I saw that, yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, and then the best part was at the end. Um, cause they were trying to prove, we'll prove the earth is flat and they were trying to do, they were doing an experiment with, uh, what was it? Light. They were pinging, and water. They were pinging something like, yeah. and having it. And he's, and he's like, okay, so to show this is flat, the, and it was at night cause they had to do it to show the light. The light will shoot through, mm-hmm. uh, evenly at, right. at these. And if there is a curve, the light will not shoot through it. It'll be above. And then when they do <laughs> To the test, he's like, "Yeah, I don't see, I don't see the light. It's, it's not coming through." Where is it? He's like, "Huh? Oh." Yeah. And they just kind of leave it at that. Well, the test wasn't conclusive because we uh, maybe set some stuff up wrong. They just come up with excuses for why it didn't work. Well, and they yeah. even ask the, uh, yeah, because they did one very scientific experiment with magnets and right, whatnot, right? Right. And they're like, uh, I think one guy even says, "You know, if this gets out." Right. Uh, we we don't want to uh, talk about the results of the test. And they even asked the the main guy in the documentary. Um, 
he kind of alludes to he's in it into it so much now that even if it were proven untrue, he's kind of stuck. Right. Like, yeah, I can't back out of this one. Mm-hmm. Like, and then the guy, there's a guy who makes flat earth globes. <laughs> yeah. It's like props and sells them and stuff. Yeah. 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 They sell tons of shit. They make songs. Yep. There was some, Oh, what, where's the guy from? He was doing some rap song about the flat earth. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. And, and these people, and they're running up hugging him and, Hey man, you're such, you know, I appreciate, you know, sharing that truth, man. Yeah. We got Like what, who is conspiring against you? What is the big, cause really who does it benefit? Right. And they're out there. They're just trying to keep the truth. Like for what purpose? Again, unless uh, the 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 globe cabal is so big that they just they make billions of dollars a year off of the sale of globes, right? There's no reason, nope, at all. But all the stuff, you know, the moon landing, of course, which they all believe is probably fake at you know, Area Fifty One. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh. You know, no, the, it's it's not round. Well, or the other one, we'll see the moon's round. No, 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 the moon is circular. That doesn't mean it's, it's round. It could yeah. be flat, a flat moon yeah. theory. God, bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> like, I, Conspiracy theorists in general tend to be people that are a little bit off, I think. Yes. I would like to see a Venn diagram of the overlap between conspiracy theorists and people who sign up for multi-level marketing programs. And also a Venn diagram of conspiracy theorists and parents that did LSD before they had the conspiracy theorist children. <laughs> That's a good point. You know? Yeah. So there's a couple of shows um, on Netflix. I think it's the same show, but they have different realms that are called The Unexplained. Mm-hmm. And they have like some about like the mind and some about other topics. And it's a pretty cool show if you haven't seen it. And they have a couple in there about that stuff, about the LSD testing and all the things that it was doing for actually helping people and then how the government shut it all down. And, and it gets into a lot of conspiracy theories as well. And, I mean, if anything, Area 51 is ripe for is conspiracy theories. And I would say that because Area 51 exists, we have shows like The X-Files and sure. V and all these other things because it, it opens all that up for that, that topic up for discussion right. and for um, involvement in the entertainment industry. So. At the very least, it's entertaining. It makes for some good entertainment. It does, yeah. Hey, one of my favorite episodes of uh, The Twilight Zone, To Serve Man. Mm. Do you remember that one? Which one was it? Remind me. So, aliens land, um, and they they start healing the world. And they're going to make the world ready in a better place so that they can go to the alien Earth. And um, basically... They cure famine, disease, uh, purify the water, basically just change the earth. Everybody is now healthy, um, and and they've really just eradicated all poverty, everything. Right. Because of their book, To Serve Man, which they only know the title. They Nobody can read the book. Right. And so they then begin taking ships of these people to their home planet, wherever Xenu or wherever that is. Right, right, right. And um, they're all excited, like, oh, we'll be there. This will be great. You know, we're worthy of going. And then at the end, they find out that To Serve Man is a cookbook. (laughs) And that they were actually fattening them up and making them better so that they could eat them. Uh, That's awesome. Mm, Yeah. (laughs) I don't think I've seen that one. That was beautiful. Yeah, it's really really good. (laughs) One of my favorites. Ooh. I think think... think there was something in that hippie. (laughs) Watch uh, Futurama. (laughs) Zerg the hippie. (laughs) Yeah, I think all those are on Netflix, too. Yeah, those are great. Amazon, you can watch all the episodes. Yeah, yeah. I was referring to the Twilight Zone, but yes, Futurama. Yeah. Yeah. Futurama good as well. Those are on Amazon? Twilight Zones? I think so, Amazon or Netflix. What do you think about the new version coming out uh, Jordan Peele's doing? I don't know. He's got some street cred as far as... Uh, that type of stuff. Doing yeah. some horror stuff, so... Yeah. Which is really... I mean, just if you were going to pick a guy, I'd be like, him? Right. You wouldn't think it, but... Mm-hmm. um, I don't know why that segued me from horror films to that... I can't think of the name of it. But the one where it was basically the bad Superman. 
horror oh, movie yeah. thing. Um, Brights, Bright uh, something? Yeah, Brightburn. Brightburn, right. Yeah. I was curious about that. I haven't seen it. But... You haven't seen it? Yeah. No, have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it yet. I have oh, it, okay. but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. We well, there we go. <laughs> hey, have any of you seen it? What do you think? Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's supposed to be pretty interesting. So. Because it's very much, he is an alien and. Uh, and I don't take it as like a, uh, 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 you know, taking a swipe at Superman or anything. If anything, the thing I kind of liked about it as a concept was you finally have a movie where it's like, oh, by the way, if Superman, this is truly the power set that you're dealing with, with, with Superman. Now, granted, this is like a little psychotic kid and, you know, he wasn't raised by the Kents and even if he was, he was still psychotic, but right. Just it demonstrates a power level that you've never seen Superman really uh, uh, demonstrate in movies before. Right. And I'm like, that would be cool to see Superman do in a movie, just kind of turn him loose. So where it's like, no, Batman could beat him. Nope, not a chance. Right. That, no, that's that's not going to happen. Only if his mom's named Martha. <laughs> Your mom's named Martha, too? So is my mom. <laughs> Martha We're gonna be buddies. best buddies, <laughs> right? Sweet, stupid, yeah. So so stupid. Hey, what happened to Zack Snyder? I don't. Is know. he doing anything now? Oh, that whole thing with the kid getting uh, his kid tried to commit suicide and he stopped making the movie or something, and then he just kind of poofed. So I don't know. Maybe he's dealing with some family issues, and I don't wish that on anybody. But no, yeah. no. But I, I don't think I haven't heard. Well, he's been now. I know him. he's been on social media dropping like. Behind the scenes photos of Justice League, yeah, and stuff talking about here's here's what it would have looked like or whatnot. So, because there actually is a picture of uh, Cavill in the suit with a mustache. Oh yeah, yeah, huh? It's like they should have just let Superman grow the beard. You know that would have actually made sense because um, I think well in the comics when they brought him back from the dead he had long hair he had a mullet. But there's been times when he's been in outer space that he's grown a beard. They should have just brought Superman back from the dead and let him have a beard. Yep. You know, just like your glorious beard. Right, they should have, yeah. That's looking and really thank sharp. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, so apparently Zack Snyder's directing a movie that's coming out. It's an action horror sci-fi called Army of the Dead. Hmm. Following a zombie outbreak in Las Vegas, a group of mercenaries take on the ultimate gamble venturing into the quarantine zone to pull off the greatest heist ever attempted. So it's a heist movie combined with a zombie movie. Okay. And it's going to have uh, Dave Bautista, um, Garrett Dillahunt. I'm in now. Theo Rossi. I have no idea who these people I are. I like Theo Rossi. I like Darren Dillahunt, too. He's good. I only know Bautista from Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. And then a bunch of weird-looking people who I'm assuming are going to be zombies. They are weird looking. Bunch of no name people. Yeah. So zombies, is that a conspiracy theory or does everybody pretty much know that's not real? I think everybody pretty much knows that's not real. Okay. Um, there's definitely a group of people out there that are zombie preppers that wish it was real. Jeez. Those guys. What's that dis- what's it like to have that type of disposable income where you can Spend it all on guns and cool shit and yeah. food and all that stuff that you need to survive. Survivalists, I guess. No, it, it, there's there's doomsday preppers, yeah. which I'm not one of them, but I mean, it, it makes more sense than zombie prepping. Right. I mean, because, you know, somebody could push a button. Yeah. Yeah, lots so. of things can happen. But, you know, the thing is, it's it's that... Do you let the fear control you? Like, when you leave the house, do you put your seatbelt on? Do you uh, check your mirrors? Do you drive at a safe rate of speed? Or do you not leave the house because you're afraid of getting in a car wreck? Right. You know? um, I mean, that's when you get into agoraphobia and other stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think with some of these guys, it's like, man, you're obsessed with the end of the world. Are you actually living at that point? Right. I mean, because think of all the good conspiracy theories they could be enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. Kennedy, the moon landing, nine eleven, nine eleven. Yeah, that one pisses me off. A that bit. one pisses me off too. Yeah, I, yeah, that one pisses me off. Um, moon landing, like okay, that's funny, right? Um, but uh, the Kennedy one, I don't know if we've talked about that. Mm, I don't think we have. Talked or about not? That I don't much, know no. if we've touched on. I, I, 
and I don't even know that it's a conspiracy theory because I'm not saying, well, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald went to Russia where they gave somebody else plastic surgery who was a military sniper, sent him in through Q. I don't, none of that bullshit <laughs> with the KGB. I right. honestly think it was the mob. Yeah. I just think it was a mob hit. Um, the mob gets him elected and they get him Chicago or Illinois and Virginia. And as soon as he's in office, he and Bobby, who's attorney general, say, we're going after the mob. Right. He's already dating one of the mobster's girlfriends or just has her as a side side piece. Right. And then the mob kind of says, wait a minute, you're going to shut us down. We just got you elected. That's not how the mob works. You owe us. Right. And which two Kennedys got assassinated? Bobby and Robert. Right. Or Bobby and Jack. So, yeah. Um, that's, I think it's just kind of a simple take. I don't think it's a big stretch to be like, well, the CIA organized this in conjunction with Castro. No, I just think the mob was like, you don't do, that's, that's not how you repay a favor to the mob. Right. That makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah. That makes a lot Marilyn of sense. Marilyn Monroe, was, that, was she killed by the Kennedys? Uh, or the mob. I don't know. There's definitely conspiracy theories there as well. Or could have just been a regular OD. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. Um, George Reeves. Suicide mm. or murder? Oh, that's a good one. I don't know, man. I, I What do you think? I mean, you saw the movie, I'm sure. Um, Yeah. But he, I mean, even before that, I mean, there's evidence that points to the fact that he was he was murdered. Just I think they said the gunshot residue. Um, there wasn't any on his hand. Right. Um, there wasn't any next to his head where he would have had the gun. So. Um, I think there's credence to that. Yeah. And I don't and I and I don't think that's far out. Wasn't there one about Bob Crane as well? There was. Yeah. That there dude was, was well. weird, man. He was. Good movie. Yeah. yeah. Colonel Hogan was... Whew. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. He, he got involved in some weird shit. He did. Um, I have a uh, uh, Area 51 conspiracy, uh, conspiracy theorist guy in my family, uh, and I remember growing up, and it was one of my, my uh, mom's brothers, that any time I was left alone with him, it was all these, like, you know, all these crazy books about aliens in area 51 and here look at this this material that came from a spaceship and all this stuff and i was always fascinated by it as a kid sure also thought he was a complete nutbag but it was fun <laughs> to you know see all these things and hear all these theories and stuff and it was always funny how most of the theories kind of negated the other theory and you know it was just a, a bunch of stuff that was yeah, but nobody of, talks about that yeah nobody talks about that that's that 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 flat earth theory thing you know that yeah. Video kind well, of see, and that was kind of my thing with the the bullshit episode on the UFO people. Most of their stories contradict each other, right? So it's like, well, how does that work? Yep. Um, they did a great one on feng shui. Because um, they said, you know, people say this is a science. So if it's a science, that means you can duplicate the results over and over again with the same outcome, or, or duplicate the process with the same outcome. Because it's all based on the stars and scientific. So they bring in three different um, interior designers, feng shuiist, whatever. Yeah. Same house. All three come up with different designs, different, you know, oh, because you're, this is your power sword, that, whatever they say. All three have completely different designs, and they all look like shit. <laughs> and... Uh, um, one guy, even as he's walking out, forgets the mics on, and he goes, oh, "Place still looks like shit anyway." <laughs> just like really insulting this lady's home. but and they're like, "Okay, see, so they, if this was a true science, they right. all would have had the same result." Charlatans, all of them. Yeah, palm readers, all that shit. Probably not. Real. What about ghost hunting? You said you're going to do some of that. I, right? I think it's a blast. I think it's fun. I don't know how much of there's reality in it and how much of it's you know just luck. Um, but I, I love that stuff. I think it's fun. I, I do it for entertainment. I don't do it because I think, you know, I'm going to capture a ghost. a ghost. You know, I might get something kind of weird on a recording that sounds kind of cool. It kind of gives me the willies, you know, but I'm not going to take it to heart. And I'm, 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 you know, I'm not the guy that's like, there's always people like you see these shows where they're like, oh, well, don't, you got to be respectful. Don't insult the ghost because if you, if you attack them, they're going to attach to you and come home with you. Like, I don't think that's real. I don't believe, see, I don't in, believe in ghosts. It, you know? So, 
You don't believe in ghosts at all, huh? No. No? You don't think there's uh, different planes of existence and no. ethereal planes out there that... No. No? What do no. you think happens when we die? I don't know. Come from dirt? Go back to dirt? Maybe. I... Uh, it's possible there's an afterlife, but I don't think you're coming back here. Yeah. Um, I really don't. Um, I don't know. Maybe there. Maybe there's a heaven. Yeah. Um, but if there's not, I will say this, and this will tell you a lot about my personality. I am okay with there not being a heaven. Okay. I really need there to be a hell though. (laughs) I really, you know, you read the paper about some of these fucks that are out there and it's like, right. Yeah. yeah, I, I I need you to go someplace and be tormented the rest of your life. Right. Um, like little Nicky with the pineapple with the ass for Hitler. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you, you just look at some of the, some of the people and it's like, no, I, you know, Pol Pot, uh, Idi Amin, Hitler, mm. um, Jeffrey Dahmer, right. um, Charles Manson's like, no, there needs to be a play. But not even that, just the creepy karate coach right? or, or the teacher. It's like, no, I need there to be a place. Uh, if the good people just get, get to sleep the rest of their life, great. But I, I, need, I need to know there's something after that this guy's just not skating. Um, right. But I don't know. I, you know, I've often joked. I hope that death is like my colonoscopy. Mm-hmm. The the part between count backwards from ten and we're done. That middle part was amazing. <laughs> I remember nothing. It was just so peaceful and black and nothing. It was like, no, I want it to be that part where it's just. <laughs> I'm just. I just don't exist. It's just right, right. Um, in an ethereal plane. Yeah, and and there is a part of me that that thinks by not by there not being an afterlife that makes life actually more precious absolutely yeah because absolutely. what you do really does matter i think it does um i think because you have to leave your mark yeah or at least try to i mean if you're if your idea of life is to sit and watch netflix for you know five years and not to achieve anything then i think you're really wasting an opportunity that you have to to do some good for yourself, for your family, for your friends, uh, for your life. Memories, you know, you don't make memories watching television. You make memories going out and doing things. No. Um, that's why sports always kind of gives me the, you know, a uh, weird vibe. Because it's like, oh, man, you know, I had these, you know, all these football games with my friends and all these great memories. Like, memories of watching someone else achieve something right. while you're with your friends drinking beers and, and yelling about it at the television. So. Eh, you know, um, for some people, that's how they make the the memory. I don't. I have a few memories of sports w- watching with my dad. Yeah. Um. But it was because we were together, and it was a big, like the miracle on ice. I remember that. That mm-hmm. to me was a great thing. But yeah, we were watching some other guys play hockey. We weren't actually doing it ourselves. Right. Um. And not that I'm saying that there's no value in it at all. It definitely no, has but value I get it because you know people become ob- obsessed with it, and if it anything that prevents you from living a life, right, or anything where your life becomes just vicarious, yeah. Um, but to these people, the guys that get into the fantasy football and stuff like that, that is part of their life. They look forward to that every year, playing yeah. fantasy football with their friends, and you know, oh, I beat you, I beat you, you know, this and that. And I get that part of it because it is social and it's fun. Um, so that, that aspect of sports, I enjoy, I just, I prefer as a person to achieve participate and participate. Yeah. So is that, is there value then in the weird UFO conspiracy theorist in that they find each other, the flat earthers, absolutely that they get out of the house and they're actually meeting other people and forming bonds and relationships. Sure. I think there's value in that, but that you goes that goes back to any social club. Really? I mean, I can talk about my nerdiness here. Um, back when DVDs were a thing and it was yeah. pre, you know, Blu-ray, I had a DVD group that I formed uh, with another friend of mine, and we would get together once a week. We'd swap DVDs, we'd talk stories, we'd talk about oh, the commentary on this is this, and you got to watch that, and you know, all these different things. And it it wasn't super, it's super nerdy. We weren't really achieving anything. We were just talking about things that we all liked together, talking about movies spending time together watching these movies, and it was just a, a good social networking thing that was fun to do. And it's, right. it was was it a waste of time? Sure. But it was fun, you know. So 
I have memories of that, making friends from that. I still have friends from that. So that's that has value in my life. So I guess you can take that and add that to sports, and it does have value for those people as well. Yeah, I and think I, I started – I, I used to enjoy football more, and then I think I, I started thinking, yeah, you know, these are the people I always disliked. And right. now they're just a you know now they're older and getting a lot paid more money. Yeah. Think about this. This is kind of a, a to your point of of um, making memories by watching sports or living vicariously through Netflix. The entertainment we, that we consume, whether it's um, books, TVs, movie, whatever, music, all the all the entertainment we enjoy is made by people who work who don't work as hard and earn more money than all of us. Right. So you're, you're supporting somebody who doesn't put in the work that you do, uh, the time, the hours, and they make a lot more money. Right. I know. I, I think you mentioned on the last podcast how, you know, Tom Cruise doing his own stunts. That's great. You know what I want to see Tom Cruise do? Get up at 6 a.m. every morning, fight an hour worth of traffic to go to a job and sit in a cubicle. That is, you can pull that off and do that day after day, you know, for years at a time. Then I'll be impressed. He might do that for six weeks as a preparation for a movie. <laughs> that might be what he does, you know. Yeah, but he's not. Because uh... you always hear these stories about these actors not knowing how to do things. Like, they'll get a role and they go, like, I've never done it before. Like, what do you mean you've never cooked something before? I don't know how to use right. pots and pans. They have to teach them how to do these things because they're basically trained monkeys, you know. So, Yeah, I, which is weird. They, there would be some things like, you know. Get in the mindset of like, ooh, what's it like to work in an office? Like, you've never had a real job? Right. It, a lot of times they haven't. Yep. And their versions of real jobs are like, you know, Jennifer Lopez is stars in this movie where she becomes a CEO, where she has no experience, and she lied on her resume, and now she's got this huge office. Like, no, that, that shit doesn't happen, and that's mm-hmm. not what that office looks like in reality. That's just the, no. the movie Hollywood version of it. But, you know, we live through that entertainment, and I think that's where Area 51 becomes important to a lot of people because it is entertaining. It's it's something for you to occupy your mind with, something for you to, to challenge yourself with to try and find more information and maybe obsess over a little bit. And that's, you know, obsession's a big thing uh, for us as a culture. We obsess about sports. Yeah. We obsess about music. We obsess about actors. We obsess about everything. Um, we even obsess, well, we obsess about politics and religion. And we obsess about cigars. So we do. Yeah. Um, the, and, and I gotta be honest that there are times when it takes the enjoyment out of it for me. Right. Because it, you talk about it so much at some point, I'm like, I, I this is my job, man. I, I don't want to sit and in my social time, sit and talk about cigars. Can we just sit and smoke cigars and talk about literally anything else? Right. Because I don't want to sit here and talk about, you know, this manufacturer, that cigar. That Like, just sit and enjoy it. Yep. Um, Ma'am, as a, um, since both of us are in the industry, as a cigar rep in the industry, I smoke a lot of cigars daily, you know, yeah. and I don't really do it for enjoyment a lot anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, when I do it for enjoyment is in the car ride between locations because it becomes a prop. Yeah, it is. It's very much a prop. Um, and I don't smoke that much, uh, when I'm in the shop because it's like, I'm going to set it down, pick it up. Like, it's like, I, I'm not going to sit and really get to enjoy and it. And you're not going to try something new when you can't focus on it. No, either, because you know? I, you know, I'd be like, I don't know. I, I forgot what it, what it was. You know, half the time I would forget what it was. I was smoking. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, for me, I do it when I'm a, when I'm a captive audience to myself. And if I'm, Driving, I know I'm going to be driving an hour and a half, two hours to somewhere. Right. I'll smoke something that I haven't smoked before because I can then enjoy it while I'm driving. Makes um, complete sense. Versus sitting in a shop and halfway smoking through something and then having to take it to the next shop and relight it. And, you know, so there's a. Uh, and, and going to the fact of not wanting to do things when you're not working. Um, I did a cigar review podcast for a bunch of years and it got to the point where I, the show changed pretty quickly from cigar reviews only to everything else. Because you kind of get bored with it, you know? It, it becomes yeah. tedious at some point. Even though it's a passion, passion can become tedium if you don't watch it. So, Well, be because you, you, what is it, the, the expression, you know, learn how the sausage is made. Right. Um, so much of that goes so far to where it's like, man, I have dissected this to the molecular level where it's no longer enjoyable. There's no magic to it. Right, right. You know, Um 
Very seldom do I smoke a cigar that's magical to me anymore. And that's kind of sad. It doesn't happen as often as I wished it would. Yeah, I'm probably... The, there's still new things I find that I'm like, oh, that's good. Right. But something that where it's like, wow, that yeah. just set me back on my heels. Yeah, probably not. Right. Um, but there, there's still a lot of good stuff out there. We're, <clears throat> we're in a second cigar boom. Yeah. We which is are. odd with, with, uh, All with the, the FDA, FDA stuff. stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, but vapes are killing people now, so. Yeah, that's something we can talk about. Yeah, that would be a good topic. Well, but maybe next week. There we go. There's going to be a next week, kids. Might be. You heard it. Maybe. Might be a month from now. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be an episode after this one. We just don't know when. <laughs> right. You know why? Form your conspiracy theories. Yeah. So uh, thanks for joining us for another week as we've uh, talked about Area 51, UFOs, conspiracy theories, and uh, more so than Brandon, I probably insulted most of you, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> um Brandon, if they would like to uh, tell me to go fuck myself, mm -hmm. where would they do that? Well, you can uh, the road to run over to uh, <laughs> Twitter and tweet to us there. At I swear to God, I thought, you, I thought you were about to give directions. Like, well, first of all, here's the main road by his house. <laughs> no. Or you can go to... <laughs> Instagram at love to hate pod and message us there. We've also got the Facebook page. We'd love you to like that as well and make comments there. If you want to listen to the show, we're on iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, Podomatic, Spreaker, Stitcher, any place you can find good quality podcasts and ours. Hey, there's our new podcast. It's called Love to Like. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, kids. We'll talk to you later. 